So how about a really simple project? You know, we've been doing some more complicated solid state projects and uh, I thought we would go back to the beginning to, uh, you know, your first crystal radio. And uh, I've done a lot of things on crystal radios. It's one of the more popular radio subjects on the internet. Books have been written, magazine articles galore. Really, since the dawn of radio, uh, crystal sets have been a project for the beginner in electronics. But um, I get things like, uh, Mike, I priced out all of the parts for your crystal radio and it came out to $327 or 2,000 uh, uh, kroner or, you know, uh, 500 dinar. And I can't possibly afford to build your crystal radio. So let's talk a little bit about parts first. Uh, the first one that scares people is the variable capacitor. Here it is. This is the apparently unobtainium 0 to 365 or 0 to 410 picofarad single uh, rotor variable. This is the one everybody wants, right? This is the one you're looking for for your crystal radio. Uh, Mike, I can't afford that. <clears throat> it's it's cost seventeen fifty plus shipping for this, so that's out. So I think this time we will substitute for this after getting it working with the variable, and we will use a varactor diode with a, a cheap potentiometer to attempt to tune the crystal set. Uh, Let's talk about the other one that drives people nuts, the headphones. Mike, you've got these excellent headphones that I looked on eBay and they're getting $300 a pair. You know, you just can't, I, I can't drop that kind of money. Plus, I've heard on the internet that these really aren't the right thing to use on a crystal radio anymore. That they're not that sensitive. And, uh, oh, by the way, the, the $400 transformer that's required for the crystal radio. I can't even order that because that's 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 difficult to get a hold of too. Um, I want to use a 99 cent crystal earpiece. Okay, very good. We can do that. Uh, let's talk about coils. Um, this was <laughs> this was a, an attempt to do a simple crystal radio coil. It's a one and a half inch diameter dowel. It's got a couple of end pieces from Home Depot, and uh, this is a, a simple way to make a tapped coil for a crystal radio. Now, I did get some pushback on this. These metal pieces could take away from the cue of the coil, as could the wooden form. So, you know, this might be, uh, might be uh, not the best, so I will bow to this, and we will wind our coil on an ordinary paper mailing tube. Now that's low loss, you're not going to beat that too easily. And because the wood itself might be taking away from the, uh, from the, the coil's uh, you know, effectiveness, I will suspend the coil. You know, we could put it up on wood blocks, or, or maybe we can use these high standoffs to get the, uh, the coil losses down. And Mike, forget it with ferrite. That's just unobtainable. Um, I'm scared of ferrite. I, I break it all the time. I don't want to build a crystal radio using ferrite. So uh, let's talk about uh, these things. The Fonestock clips. Oh yeah. This is a classic brass one, beautifully made. And this is the kind you can get on the internet, you know, 10 for $5 or something. Well, I can assure you the 10 for $5 one doesn't work as well as the original, but that's the way things go. If you want to use these, use them. You know, I always like screws and washers. It's hard to complain about screws and washers, right? How about the fixed capacitor? Now, everybody would love to use a postage stamp mica capacitor as their output uh, bypass cap, but, you know, other people want to use a disk. You've got these beautiful mylar and uh, paper uh, probe, polyprope uh, capacitors. You know, these nice tubular ones you can get now. 
I actually prefer the Black Beauty because I like to get the vintage sound out of the crystal radio. So I use the Black Beauty. So did I miss anything that people might be concerned about? Oh, how about the most important part of all? Yes, this is the most important part of all. We call this the crystal diode. Yeah, this crystal diode is a 1N270, and we're looking for the ultimate diode for our crystal radio. Uh, just buy some real germanium diodes. Doesn't matter where they're from. Um, don't get these knockoffs that are actually silicon or shocky diodes. Go for the real germanium crystals and you'll be all set. So uh, what can we talk about in terms of wire? Mike, I can't get the, the number 26 wire that you're specifying. I only have number 28 or I only have number 24. The crystal radio doesn't really care what wire you're going to use. I mean, even if you've got uh, a telephone hookup wire from the 1940s, you could probably make your crystal radio coil out of this. Now, it might be, look a little silly and be a little unwieldy, but if you've got some small wire that has a good insulator on it, go for it. Build your crystal radio out of that. Hey, maybe we could use this for the antenna, by the way. And, uh, Mike, I can't, I can't Put, I can't put an antenna outside. You know, because of the uh, covenant in my area, uh, I'm limited to a 15-foot antenna for the crystal radio. Well, that's going to be a problem. Um, you might have to, like, wrap wire around your bed frame several times and use it as a loop antenna. Maybe that would work. Anyway, this is the intro to a simple crystal radio video. We're going to build it up. We're going to see what we can do with just some simple parts and try to keep the cost under $350. The most fun of any crystal radio project is winding the coil. Now this two inch mailing tube, when you're putting you know, 100 turns on a two inch mailing tube compared to 100 turns on a one and a half inch dowel, you're going to find that you get a lot more inductance. So, it's always best to put taps in. And I, uh, I've tapped this one at 60 turns, at 90 turns, and uh, the end of it is out at 120 turns. So it's 120 turns total tapped at 60 and 90 turns. Approximately, it's not that critical. Now, if you want to put a formal diode tap in, a lot of people like to uh, feed the diode lower on the coil, I would put one in around 30 turns. So, if I had to do this over again, I would probably put a tap at 30 turns as well. So, 30 turns, 60 turns, 90 turns, and 120 turns total. That's going to give you a lot of flexibility um, covering the entire AM broadcast band with no compromises. Similarly on the primary side it's 30 turns center tapped. Now depending on what kind of antenna you have uh, you might use the the 15 turns of that for antenna and ground or you might use the whole thing. But at least it gives you two different places to attach. And the way that I make the taps, let me get the wires all spread out here a little bit so you can see. I simply take a loop of wire and twist it. And that makes the taps. Now if I want to connect to them, of course I have to tin those. But that's a very simple AM crystal radio coil IQ solenoid inductor. And that's going to be mounted on the standoffs, something like this. The other question is, how do you wind the coil so neatly? I've, uh, I've just taken a nut driver, put it in a little vise, and the thing goes round and round, it comes off the spool. 
I run this spool down through a couple of books and transformers on the floor which give me the proper tension when I am winding the coil. Okay? And that puts plenty of tension when you're winding the coil. I pre-drill the holes on the coil so that I'm not fishing around when I'm building the coil. I have the, hoil, the holes all pre-drilled. I put sets of two in the coil. That way I can put the winding under and loop through a couple times at each of these and that holds the, uh, the wire a lot better. Going through two loops instead of just one. I get this thing wrong here. So I've got these double holes here. I go through a couple times, through a couple times, through a couple times, and that keeps the wire nice and tight. If I have anything loose, I can make it up with my little twists. So I made a little bezel for the front. This is just to hold the variable capacitor or the potentiometer in the case of the Vractor we're going to be adding. Just a little piece of masonite. Uh, you can see the coil has now stood off the chassis uh, for high Q operation on the crystal set. So let's take a look at what uh, the crystal set's uh, turning out to be. As you can see, I've got a bezel on the front. That's basically so we have uh, a place to mount the variable capacitor or the potentiometer as we work this into a varactor system. And I've got a little dial on the front that uh, I will rough mark at first and then once I've got a, a calibrated dial I'll print it in something a little stiffer. Um, I've got a couple of alligator clips that are for holding the, the diodes so you can substitute in some different diodes. Um, here are the taps on the coil. I hope you can see that. Right now I'm on the maximum inductance point to the capacitor. And I have the diode tapped down to um, closer to the middle of the coil. I'm using the entire primary. There's a tap in the middle to cut that in half as well. And uh, you guys may be wondering why your crystal sets don't work. And, uh, well, you know, you have to kind of give them a little bit of respect. I mean, if you were a crystal set, would you work with a knob like this? I mean, this is doomed to failure, right? No, that crystal set wants to have something on it that, you know, something that looks a little sexier than that. And now that set will work. The other thing, uh, I didn't want to be stingy on the uh, fixed capacitor and the output, so I'm using a 0.01 1 kilovolt capacitor on the output. You know, you can't be too careful with, uh, I've seen some men hurt quite badly uh, with crystal sets, so you have to be a little bit careful. So I wanted to go over probably the most important part of any crystal radio project, and that is the antenna system. Um, you're going to be completely disappointed if you don't get a little bit of wire in the air for your crystal radio. The grounding system is a little more forgiving. You can usually use a cold water pipe or some type of uh, ducting uh, or a, a modest small ground rod of four or five feet uh, will work fine with a crystal radio. But the antenna, you really need to get about 50 feet of wire in the air if you can and you need to get it off the ground probably five or six meters to do some work. Um, I put up a representative and very modest crystal radio antenna for this video. It's 75 feet of number 22 wire. It's up about 20 feet at the end and about 15 feet of it on the house side uh, is about getting down to the basement window and underground. So effectively of the 75 feet, maybe 50 feet of it's in the air. 
and I thought that would be a very modest and representative antenna uh, for this video. I'm showing an antenna tuner here. This antenna tuner will basically load the antenna and make it resonant uh, anywhere in the broadcast band. Use about half of it if you've got this 75 foot antenna. If it's a shorter antenna like 35 or 50 feet, you'll end up using a lot more of the coil to resonate the antenna. This, uh, you'll see in the video that this markedly brings up the signal levels and helps with your uh, selectivity as well. It takes a lot of the stress out of the coupling uh, part of the uh, tuner. It, uh, the larger you make this, the less your selectivity will be, but with the tuner you get that back again because you're resonating the antenna. So I didn't want to completely focus on the tuner part of this, but as you can see it's about 300 turns of wire. Uh, I'm using number 26 wire and that ball on top is nothing but a, a, a brass, nickel plated brass ball, very easy to drill through. I'm using uh, some heavy number 10 tinned wire as the, uh, as the slider and I've got a uh, kind of a suspension system here that has springs on it that give as you slide the ball across. There's probably a lot better tuner designs than this, but this is easy enough. Um, it doesn't uh, contact one turn at a time like a perfect tuner would. It's probably getting on two or three of them, but it still does a tremendous job. So uh, I've got the crystal radio hooked up to my antenna and my little amplifier. You guys have seen this amplifier before. It's a 386 on a board. Yeah, 386. The LM386 is an amplifier everybody uses. Uh, I've got a potentiometer in there that is acting as the load for the crystal radio. Remember, you need to have a load on the crystal radio to, to actually detect anything. So it'd be silly if I didn't actually test it with headphones on, and I checked it out with the Nathaniel Baldwin's as well as my R2 uh, military headphones from the 30s, which are 2000 ohm headphones, and uh, it's working quite well. So, again, I've been using the little amplifier so you guys can hear what I'm doing, but uh, it's equivalent to what you would hear in the headphones, at least at about half volume. At full volume, the really strong stations uh, blast through the amplifier, and they're also very loud on the headphones. German sucks. Alright, do you refuse? No. Healthy man got his booster shot on November 6th. Play. Well, that's eight stations. That's not bad. So I used my generator to verify the dial settings. And uh, boy, this uh, capacitor, and uh, on the second tap where we've got 90 turns, um, it's really. Uh, impressive. We're going all the way from 430 kilohertz to 2 megahertz with one sweep of the dial with this particular uh, uh, primary and antenna. Now, of course, a different antenna would have different results. Uh, that's why we have the taps. But uh, it, it's quite impressive. And uh, all I did was I coupled in with a 20 picofarad capacitor uh, my generator, so I wasn't disturbing uh, the input too much. Okay, so I have the 75 foot antenna attached directly to the crystal set. 75 feet is not a quarter wave on any uh, broadcast band frequency, but it should work better at the higher end of the band than it does at the lower end of the band as far as being a natural resonance close to a quarter wave. Let's see what we can pick up here. So I'm getting uh, 1370, which is a local station. Again, that's towards the top of the band. There's another station. Uh, I think that's 610. That's another local station. 
pretty weak. That's it. Two stations is all I'm picking up with that 75 foot antenna. Now with headphones I'd be able to hear maybe a little bit more than on this amplifier. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add the loading coil. The loading coil will uh, essentially resonate the 75 foot antenna closer to the frequency that uh, the station is tuned to. So let's hook that up. Okay. Let's go back to that uh, 1370. Event since 2010. And Team USA also clinched okay, the that's the 1370 station again. Okay, so it's not using very much of the coil to resonate. Here's another. Okay, there's another station that we couldn't hear before without the tuner. There's a third station we can get with the tuner. There's a fourth station with the tuner. So when you're working with a crystal set, and I'm using a 75 foot antenna, and this is just a, a very representative antenna. It's a a piece of number 22 wire that I run out the basement window. It goes up about 10 feet to a, uh, a clothesline post and then it gently goes up to about the 20 foot level at the uh, end of the yard. So it's a 75 foot long wire antenna and this is the ground connection. Now when you hook that up to the crystal radio by itself what happens is uh, you pick up two stations, three stations, something like that, just the local stations. But if you add this little antenna loading coil, which is a tuning element that resonates the antenna, you can pick up many more stations. Um, you saw I had a piece of coax hooked up to this thing before, and that was just going out to a ham antenna. It wasn't particularly tuned to any frequency that was near the broadcast band, but it's a big antenna, and uh, I was picking up a lot of stations. Not really fair to show that with a crystal radio. This little 75 foot long wire, however, is representative of what most people put up. It's probably a lot less than what some people can get in their yard. And it's probably a lot more than what some people can put in the yard, but it's representative. 75 feet, we're using uh, about half of the coil. If it were 50 foot long wire, we'd be using more of the coil. And if it were a 120 foot long wire, the coil would be too much inductance uh, because you start to get beyond the resonance uh, of a quarter wave and the tuner doesn't help you anymore. So maybe you have to use a capacitor in series with the, uh, with the wire to resonate it. So let's see what we can hear. By the time I got up to where I was going, it was just about... So that's a. This is the very top of the beam. So you can see how the antenna tuner allows you to focus in on one station. So if you look at the I've got about four stations up there that I'm able to pick up between 1300 and 1600. If I go down, 
See, I had to add a little more inductance to resonate this station that's around a thousand. It's a Boston station, WRKO, I think. So one of the more difficult things for a crystal radio is to be able to separate two stations. I have a local station, uh, 610 WGIR at 610 kilohertz, and then we have w, uh, WRKO down in Boston, and they're 70 kilohertz apart. GOP members, but there are some squishy GOP so members. But anyway, uh, we're not going to have the FCC up your ASS. Oh, my. So, therefore, I shall highly recommend all of Cooney County, call your local senator, call your uh, state rep, call whoever will answer the phone. Hey, that's another thing. But anyway, when I say, please, in the name of... No, in the name of God. In the name of God. Against it right now. Separating two stations that are only 70 kilohertz apart is a big test for any crystal radio. I uh, have 610 WGIR, which is a local station, only about nine miles away. And the other station is WRKO down in Boston. And snap decisions about how to manage your assets because you're fine. So I'm not going to go any further than this. I think the video is uh, too long to begin with. But... Uh, We've gone over the basics, we've hit the uh, radio construction details, antenna and ground, and uh, you've been able to hear how the, uh, the basic crystal radio setup with the tuning coil can do about as many stations as an AM table radio can do. And that's pretty good for a crystal radio, and it has adequate selectivity. We get the selectivity both from the low diode tap and the loose coupling on the input link on the primary. So I hope you've enjoyed this video on building your first crystal radio. Next we're going to get into varactor tuning on the crystal radio. Try to get this dial straightened out so it's not all crowded at the top of the band.